welcome to To The Point. Now today we've got another interesting programme for you with my dear Dr Richard Kent. <laughs> Thank Hello. you. Hello. <laughs> Lovely to be with you again, Hello. dear Dr Laura. <laughs> <laughs> now Richard, today we're going to be talking about evolution and the law of physics. Now I have to say physics was not my favourite subject at all. Not at A-levels, not at O-levels, not at any level at all. <laughs> so I'm relying on you, Dr Richard, to really lead the way here. <laughs> and we're going to be talking about um, two things, basically. Evolution and the law of physics. And right. how we, basically, we hopefully, are, we probably are going to annoy a few evolutionists out there. But I hope that we're, we have more creationists who are watching than evolutionists. <laughs> but Richard, <laughs> as God says, there are two basic laws. I mean, God didn't say that, but we know that. But there are two basic laws of physics. Would you like to just talk about that very briefly? Well, yes. Um, I mean, a anybody who studies physics at O level or A level or any level will start off with the first and second law of thermodynamics. And the first law very simply says that um, energy and matter cannot be created or destroyed. I'll say it again. Energy and matter cannot be created or destroyed. Now, that, of course, causes massive problems to the evolutionists because they want the singularity, which they talk about, to create itself. And they want, the, uh, they want it to explode, which requires energy, the energy to come from nowhere as well. But anyway, as far as, as far as the actual laws of physics, the basic laws of physics and the first law of physics says that energy and matter cannot be created or destroyed, which is why in the book of Genesis, and I think Laura might be reading this at some stage, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. So it, it didn't all happen by chance. God created the heavens and the earth. And he also created energy. When, when God said, let there be light, that's when God created energy. Um, but moving on to the second law of thermodynamics, it gets even more complex. Uh, you'll, you'll see this in the fun facts, but it gets even more complex because the second law of thermodynamics describes something called entropy. Now, that's a rather technical word, so I'll make it simple for you. Entropy just describes um, energy systems. And energy systems always get worse and not better. For example, a hot cup of tea gets cold. Um, I'm always drinking cups of tea when I'm working and I tend to get involved in my work and then a quarter of an hour later I've got a cup of tea and it's cold because that's because of entropy. Another example of entropy, um, all of us, um, um, our metabolic rate um, measured by our body temperature if you like, um, is getting, is slowing down because of entropy. En I'm sure you're aware of this, that our, our metabolic rate slows down. There are all sorts of examples of entropy, but they all cause massive, massive, massive problems for the evolutionists, because the evolutionists say that 13.78 billion years ago, the singularity and the energy to explode the singularity all evolved by chance. I don't think so. But then, worse, it exploded and formed a complex system called the universe. You've seen uh, what we can see of the universe. It's unbelievably complex, and they say this happened by chance. Entropy says no, no, no. <laughs> if you have an explosion, things get worse, not better. Now, for example, you've, you've seen explosions on films probably. There were two uh, historical explosions at the end of World War II in Nagasaki and Hiroshima. We didn't get super Nagasaki, super Hiroshima. No, we got, a, sadly, a, a totally destroyed cities. Anyway, back to you, Laura. Absolutely, Richard. And as you mentioned, Genesis 1-1, right at the end, the very first verse of the very first chapter kind of sets the scene for us, really. And it says, just that you re you've already said it, but I'll just reiterate it. It says in Genesis 1, verse 1, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And as we go from there, <laughs> shall we go to our first fun fact? Before we do, Before just we do? want okay. to say that uh, God, uh, God has put that in the original Hebrew, but he's actually put his stamp on this. I've, I've mentioned this many times before, but it is so important. Um, there are seven uh, words there in the, in the Hebrew, in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth, but they all have a numeric value. They all have a numeric value. And in the gematria, that's the numeric value of the words, there are three nouns, God, heaven, and earth. 
And if you add up the gematria of the, the value of the, the three words, God, heaven and earth, it comes to seven, seven, seven. And of course, seven speaks of supernatural perfection, indicating, indicating that uh, God the Father, God the Son and God the Holy Spirit were involved in creation, seven, seven, seven. And obviously, God is a God of design, so he knew all about algebra. So, if you get those, uh, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth, there are actually um, 28 uh, letters in, in those seven words, and seven words. If you multiply the, uh, all the letters up, a very big number, and then um, multiply all the words up and divide the top line, the multiplication of all the letters, divided by the multiplication of all the, or the product of all the words, you get, guess what? Pi, 3.14, which you learnt about in algebra. And of course God knows all about algebra because he designed the, the whole universe. So there you are, you've got pi in um, Genesis 1.1. It's mind-blowing. God has put his stamp on Genesis 1-1. <laughs> Absolutely. And we can see the patterns in this same creator in different organisms and different organs as well. Yes. He's got a pattern and he works in patterns yeah. like the number 777. Yes. I've just come back from Israel not too long ago and uh, one of the places we went to was in the Jewish quarters. They had the Cardo, which has got lots of yes. uh, art galleries and yes. things. And we, we happened to meet um, one of the uh, artists in person and he actually autographed uh, one of his uh, paintings for us. And what we noticed, there were similarities in the paintings of this particular artist, just that if you were a Monet fan or yeah. whatever, yeah. Chagall or what have you, you would see that the, diff that the patterns. Yeah. God works in patterns yes, and he's he so amazing. And thankfully, he's introduced us scientists, clinicians, to the patterns as he's, he, that he's worked in. And instead of appreciating, appreciating it, a lot of us want to take the glory for ourselves, but we're not gonna do that. We're not gonna be tempted, are we, Richard? <laughs> so we're going to go to our first fun fact, and this is um, the first law of thermodynamics. <laughs> Hello, my name is Richard Kent. I want to talk to you today about the first law of thermodynamics. This is the basic of all physics. Basically, the first law of thermodynamics says that energy cannot be created or destroyed. Um, when I say energy cannot be created or destroyed, that includes potential energy. And I'll describe that um, or illustrate that by using the sun as an illustration. Now the sun is the source of all the energy in our solar system. In the sun, something extraordinary happens, totally supernatural, we can't do it, it's called nuclear fusion. And every second, 600 million tons of hydrogen are converted into helium, except for four tons. And those are converted into heat, light and energy. And are really, really important because the heat and the light is really important for planet Earth, even 93 million miles away, because we need the heat and the plants need the light for photosynthesis. So you can accept that the sun is really important. But the sun also has a great deal of potential energy in terms of hydrogen, which has not yet been converted into helium. It's a bit like a piece of coal. If you look at a piece of coal, you're looking at a piece of, if you look at a piece of coal, you're looking at potential energy. It's not being put on your fire or in your furnace yet. It has potential energy. So that if you put that piece of fire into a furnace or, or into a fire, then energy would be released. So we come back to the original statement is that energy cannot be created or destroyed. And now we look at evolution. What do they teach us? Well, the evolutionists teach us that 13.8 billion years ago, there was a singularity that was so small you can't see it, but of infinite weight, and it exploded by chance and caused the whole universe to be created. That actually is directly opposed to the first law of thermodynamics. The Bible is quite clear. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. That's Genesis 1.1. 1, 1. 
in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. And then God said, let there be light. God spoke and the matter was converted into energy and light. Now we know from uh, Einstein's law of relativity, E equals mc squared, energy equals mass times the square of the speed of light. So there is a relationship between mass, energy, light and time. So when God said, let there be light, that was the beginning of time. Time is the fourth dimension and there are 11 dimensions that we know about and there probably are many more. So the Bible um, is very clear that um, all, all mass, all energy, all light and all time, the source of all of those comes from Jesus Christ himself. However, the evolution has a God of chance. And this God of chance is a very convenient God of chance because this God of chance can uh, disobey the most important law of physics, which is the first law of thermodynamics, which says that energy and potential energy cannot be created or destroyed. So the evolutionists will come and lie to you and say that the singularity, which is so small it cannot be seen, that's very convenient for you, for them, um, uh, of infinite mass exploded on its own and created the universe. So two points there. First of all, um, the evolutionists teach us that the potential energy of the singularity created itself, and secondly, that it exploded, which requires energy, and they don't explain where the energy came from. So, do I believe in evolution? It's absolute rubbish. Is it a lie? Absolutely. It's complete and utter and utterly, there is absolutely nothing in common between the Bible and evolution. I think it should be called evolution. Um, it's totally evil and opposed to the scriptures. No, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Thanks for listening and God bless you. Welcome back to To The Point, and uh, Richard, that was a good play of word there, wasn't it? <laughs> evolution. evolution, as opposed yes. to evolution. But yes, yeah, so that was the first law of thermodynamics, and Richard, let's just uh, perhaps unpack that a little bit more. You mentioned that energy cannot be created or destroyed. Oh. And so um, you've basically debunked the evolution theory, haven't you? Because it would have had to have started somehow. Where did that thing, where did that energy come from? Well, where did the mass come from? Where does the energy come from? Um, they just tie themselves up in knots. I mean, they claim evolution is scientific. It's totally non-scientific. It doesn't even obey any laws of physics at all. It's all, it's all imagination. It's rubbish. And it's worse than rubbish. It's actually evil because, um, unfortunately, this evolution rubbish is taught to our children at schools and they learned about dinosaurs billions of years ago and all the rest of it, and they basically treat cr the creation story in Genesis as a fairy story, basically. Um, they, they treat it as an embarrassment. I'm embarrassed about evolution. It's rubbish. It's garbage. Uh, Jesus, by the way, qu quoted a creation twice. He actually used the word creation twice in Mark 10.6 and Matthew 19.4. He used the word creation. Don't you know, at the beginning of the creation, um, man was, uh, God created the male and female at the beginning of the creation. And actually, um, Jesus actually referred to Genesis, the book of Genesis, 37 times. And by the way, uh, Jesus actually, uh, uh, he, was, he went to the equivalent of a Bible school and he would have learnt the Torah, the whole five uh, books of the Torah, uh, word for word, every single word of it. And he quoted uh, from, from the Torah, the Pentateuch, many, many times. <laughs> so anyway, um, evolution's rubbish. <laughs> yes. Well, it's very sad that our children are being taught that evolution is as it is, because it means that they they don't have a sense of, I mean, it, it takes away the reference of things like morality and, and actually loving your neighbour as yourself, because you're just an animal. 
you've just evolved from a monkey or whatever. And, you know, animals behave like this. You're just an animal. Mm. And we're totally not animals. We are created in God's image. God took time in creating us. We're special to him. We're, we're in his image. Yeah. I could actually yeah. add to that, mm. actually, in Luke chapter 3, Luke was a medical doctor, he actually gives the genealogy of Jesus, in other words, the ancestors of Jesus, going right way back to Adam. 77 generations, which is a very important number, by the way, 77 generations, because 7 is a supernatural number of God, but <clears throat> it says that at the end of the book of Luke that Adam was the son of God. Say it again, Adam was the son of God, not the son of a monkey. He was the son of God. That's what it says. You can look it up for yourself. The last verse in Luke chapter 3. That's Adam's the son of God. <laughs> Adam, the son of God. Mm. Isn't that wonderful? And we, so are we. <laughs> that is what we are too. We and are that's now. wonderful, yes. yeah. wonderful to be a child of God. And as you're watching, I hope you are really excited about the fact that you are a child of God. You're not, you, were not, you did not evolve. God created you wonderfully and fearfully. And, and John 1, 1, 3, it actually just says, in the beginning, before we go to our next um, video, fun facts, it says in John 1, 1, 3, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. <laughs> God was in the beginning, and he was in the beginning, and all things were made through him. And without him, nothing was made that was made. You know, God has given us the answers on a plate here, isn't he, really? Yeah. I did this. I did this. <laughs> <laughs> Whichever way you want to look at this, it's yeah. me. I am your creator. Yeah. I'm the one who made you, who fashioned you, who gave you such wonderful characteristics, colour of your eyes, skin colour, etc., etc. So he has made us so wonderfully and fearfully. And I think one of the things about To The Point is actually bigging God up and saying, showcasing, and highlighting him, glorifying him. We're giving him the glory that he really deserves. Right. Wonderful. <laughs> so shall we go to our next uh, video? Yes. Richard? Okay. And this is about the second law of thermodynamics. Hello, my name is Richard Kent. Today I want to talk about the second law of thermodynamics. I don't know if you've heard about that, but it's a really important law. Uh, the second law of thermodynamics talks about entropy and I'm going to explain entropy very simply and then try and explain in more complex detail exactly what we're talking about. Basically, if I have a hot cup of tea in my hand, after half an hour I end up with a cold cup of tea. What's happened is the tea has become cold and the room has become slightly hotter. Uh, entropy is uh, talking about the uh, increasing disorder in a system. Um, let's take the sun as an example. Uh, in the sun, you've heard me talk about the sun many, many times on purpose, because the sun is the, is the source of all the energy in our solar system. And within the sun, every minute, sorry, every second, uh, 600 million tons of hydrogen are converted into helium every second, except for four tons which convert into light and heat and energy. So actually, all the time the sun is getting slightly smaller. Now, in billions of years' time, which we're not going to see because Jesus Christ is going to come back first, um, in theory the sun would burn out completely. And that's called entropy because the amount of energy and uh, available energy in the hydrogen atoms in the sun is decreasing all the time, so eventually we e end up with heat death. Now this doesn't just apply to heat and energy, it applies to all systems. I'll give you another simple example. I have a very messy study. And in my very messy study, there are lots of drawers and, uh, and lots of different places I put things. And every three months, they get very, very messy. And I have to tidy that up. And it's because of entropy. Increasing disorder in Richard Kent's study. There's increasing disorder in our own bodies. I used to be able to run quite a reasonable marathon, but I can't do it 
anymore. I can't run a reasonable marathon because of entropy in my own body. All of us are getting older. We're not getting better, we're actually getting worse. We're getting older because our, our, our whole body systems are winding down. Now, what do the evolutionists teach? They teach something completely different. They teach that 13.8 billion years ago there was a big bang and something which arose by chance called a singularity exploded and caused a highly ordered system. Let me describe the system in terms of planet Earth. Our Earth is 93 million miles away from the Sun and we're travelling through space at 60,000 miles per second and the, at the equator, the equator is spinning round at a thousand miles an hour. However, if we were one percent closer to the Sun, we would all boil. If we were one percent further away, we would all freeze to death as one solid block of ice. Now there are literally millions and millions of different parameters on planet Earth and I don't have to go into all the details except to point out that the whole solar system is very carefully and intricately designed by a super scientist called Jesus Christ. Very, very carefully with literally millions and millions of interdependent parameters. But the evolutionists like to break the rules of thermodynamics the first and the second laws of thermodynamics. They like to say that with an explosion, things get, with an explosion, things get more organized. Have you ever seen an explosion? Have you seen a firework explode? Have you ever seen on, on a film? Have you ever seen an explosion? Have you ever seen something organized as a result of an explosion? Well, I'll tell you what, I haven't. I have never heard of an explosion causing a an, an organized universe. Let me tell you that the laws of entropy say that it's not possible to have an explosion to cause an, an organized universe. The answer is evolution is rubbish. In the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. Thanks for listening and God bless you. Welcome back to To The Point and Richard that was amazing wasn't it? <laughs> I mean that, that image of an explosion of that lovely pretty <laughs> porcelain house absolutely sends home the point really that explosions cause destruction yes. not order. Explosions yeah. cause chaos yeah. and debris and not some ordered, created, systematically choreographed yeah system. Yeah. I love that your description of Jesus as a super scientist. Well, of course he is. He absolutely is. Yes. And um, I don't know if you remember uh, when, uh, in, when we're still in our uh, Cleveland studios, when Howard took Leslie's handbag and emptied out all the contents <laughs> <laughs> and then picked them one by one and described all the things she had in her handbag. <laughs> and I'm, I'm just imagining what your messy drawer must have looked like as well. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> Hopefully your wife won't do that to you, eh? <laughs> Bring all the contents, or well, oh, maybe she will one day. <laughs> Val! <laughs> no. Well, we hope you've been enjoying the programme so far, but back to you, Richard, and talk about this. So. Well, um, <clears throat> I used to uh, uh, be a friend of Chuck Missler. Chuck Missler has gone to be with the Lord now. Wonderful, wonderful Bible te teacher, highly respected, but I actually spent a quite a lot of time with him in Israel. And one of his, uh, one of his uh, many, many teachings was about the parameters on planet Earth. Because the parameters to support human life are very, very specific and have to be with a very, very fine toleration. Now, for example, um, uh, the temperature variation on planet Earth is actually very, very minor. We say it's a very hot day or a very cold day, but actually the, the variation in temperature between a hot day and a cold day um, is actually tiny because our bodies can only cope with a very small variation in temperature. The same with the humidity. Uh, you can't go and live in a, in a sauna. 
um, you just in a, you know, in a hot, humid environment because the humidity will kill you. Uh, the oxygen, uh, partial pressure of oxygen in the air is specific. The partial pressure of nitrogen in the air is very specific. The gravitational field of planet Earth is specific. If the gravity, gravitational field was too great, we wouldn't be able to stand up, and if it wasn't high enough, we'd all float off into outer space. Um, the, um, Everything about uh, planet Earth is very, very specifically designed. And I remember Chuck Mister saying, he said, it's almost as if if you were, um, if you were a Martian looking for space, looking from Mars and looking at planet Earth, and so it's almost as if somebody designed that specifically for man to live on planet Earth. Well, of course, the answer is a Martian might like think, think that, but the Bible says, actually, yes, God did design the Earth specifically for man to live on planet Earth, very, very specifically, with very, very tight um, parameters, which are all, by the way, interdependent, because if you increase the temperature, you actually affect the partial pressure of oxygen and carbon dioxide and the humidity and all the other factors. Um, <clears throat> so God has designed something very, very specific, and for evolutionists to say this all happened by chance actually makes me extremely cross, because it's not scientific, and even uh, if you tell the, the Genesis story to children, they will understand exactly what you're talking about. But if you go, and go to a university and talk to to, to academics, as I have done, um, they are, they regard the Genesis story as a fairy story, and it's so sad. They, they believe in this evolutionary lie. It's rubbish. Well, Richard, I mean, the evidence is there, isn't it? Yes. It's not Dr. Richard Ken saying it's rubbish. You go to the Word of God, God points out over and over and over again. I created you, I made man, I created you in my image, you're fearfully and wonderfully made. In the beginning I did this, in the beginning I did this. So there was a beginning, there was a, there was a God, he was there in the beginning and he created and his creation continues to exist <laughs> because of the word that he has spoken way back in time, not billions of years ago, as people would say, but he spoke his word, it existed and it continues to exist because of what he has said and what he has done. So as you're watching To The Point, I hope you've, you've been interested in what we've been saying. I hope you've been challenged as well, especially if you believe that um, Christianity and evolution go, go side by side. I hope you've been challenged to reconsider your views, go back to the Word of God and see what God really is saying. And also just to look at your own body, go on Wikipedia or wherever and look at the different anat anatomical systems in the body. And as Dr. Richard has been saying, you've produced quite a lot of fun facts, haven't you, Richard? <laughs> so with, you know, you can also see Richard's fun facts is you have yeah. got, uh, yes. what, what is your YouTube channel called? Just Google Dr. Richard Kent fun facts. It'll go straight there. It'll go straight there. You've produced yeah. so many fun facts. So look, avail yourself of these fun facts. Read the Word of God. You've been watching To The Point with Richard and I. Thank you so much, Richard. Info at Revelation TV to interact with us. We'd love your feedback. Until next time, see you again soon. God bless you.